There's a wonderful line by the poet Meryl Kaiser: the world is not made out of atoms, it's made out of stories. Change their lives for the better. Human tendency is to, is to, uh, is to hope. But the stories we tell about who we are shape our lives. My name is uh, Daniel Alarcón, uh, and my novel is called Lost City Radio. G growing up in, in the United States, um, we, um, very far from our, from our family in Lima, we spent a lot of time um, sort of trying to figure out ways to communicate with our family back home. This is something that, you know, for younger audiences will seem totally strange, but there was no internet, and there was no Skype, and there was no uh, phone cards and cheap international calls. I mean, this was a different era. Um, and so what we would do is make these little radio programs. Um, so Sundays we would gather in my parents' bedroom and my father would record with a cassette tape greetings to the family um, and do little interviews where he would interview us about school and, you know, my sister might recite a poem. I might, you know, d you know describe a day at, you know, in first grade or whatever. And these tapes, you know, would be passed along to a family member who was traveling or someone, uh, you know, or we would risk it and put it in the mail or whatever. And we would get back similar tapes from Lima. For me, I think this was, this was uh, these were really important memories. They sort of really sort of encapsulate um, the, the power of the human voice. For my father, it came out of his, he, he got his start in radio. Um, my father was a, was a, a soccer announcer at age 15 in Arequipa calling soccer matches. Um, and a lot of my family still works in radio. And in 2001, I went to visit uh, a cousin of mine, Cecilia, who was working in the north. And um, this also was, was a, a really seminal moment because it brought home to me the importance of, of radio, not just uh, you know, for me, where radio is entertainment and a way to communicate uh, with family, but in isolated areas. Uh, rural areas, uh, kind of the places that are forgotten by the state, we would be in the middle of nowhere and come across uh, a shepherd with a radio around his neck. It, it becomes a lifeline for people. It becomes a, um, a, a, you know, it's like someone's listening. It's no accident that, you know, shortly thereafter I started working on Lost City Radio. I mean, it was just such a, a, a such a powerful experience. Um, if at all. Yeah, no. It's an interesting question. I have a lot of, of concerns uh, uh, about the current situation and the, the current state of our democracy. I think um, um, the the extremes, uh, the, ex the extreme points of view, get more weight than they deserve. And the idea that the pe that people who disagree with you are somehow enemies of the state, I think, is is, is an idea that's gained a lot of currency. Um, in the last few years, and uh, I mean, since I was a kid, you know, uh, you know, since, since it's just gotten worse. It was very important for me in the novel to to condemn violence as a as a as a tool for political discourse. I grew up hearing the words terrorism and and thinking and associating them with the city where I was born and the country where I was born, and never with the United States. And then, you know, after two thousand one, obviously that shifted. Um, and we came in this country to learn all this new vocabulary and all these new ways of being afraid. Um, I think of it as a novel that's very much about the war on terror and the, the you know, the, the post 9-11 U.S., you know. A, a sense of history is, is important for a democratic society, and, uh, but I, I don't know many societies that really have a, a good sense of history. You know, I think there's a great deal of, uh, of inconvenient, unpleasant historical facts that, uh, that are best ignored uh, for the sake of, of creating sort of a coherent nat national discourse. The problem is that the people who quite rightly point out these you know, historical omissions um, get branded as radicals or as extremists or as uh, you know, people outside the mainstream that we don't have to pay attention to. In terms of things that make me hopeful, um, I'm afraid there's not a ton of things that make me hopeful right now. Um, I mentioned earlier the, the idea of culture, and I, and I think that 
the you know the reason I am not an activist and the reason I am not a uh, you know don't spend all my day thinking about politics is because I do find more hope in the cultural realm. Uh, you know, some, something exciting coming out of a neighborhood or a particular subculture, uh, a new form of artistic expression, whether it's dance or music or slang or um, you know. Um, new ways of dealing with uh, you know, the economic crisis, very creative ways that people are using. Um, I feel like those are exciting uh, and, and compelling places to, to find hope, you know, sort of small, individual, community-driven responses to, to larger problems. I feel like th those are sort of the basic building blocks of democracy.